It has been more than half a century since Timothy Leary urged the world to turn on, tune in, drop out. And though Leary himself passed on, the lure of psychedelics never really did. They went underground for decades, but now they are back, and they're not just for the counterculture anymore. Today, the regular culture, your friends, your coworkers, your quirky neighbors, they are giving LSD, mushrooms, ketamine, and other psychedelics a second look. And they're liking what they see. This is the crazy part. Even corporate America is turning to so-called psychedelic retreats, a new uh, take on the business trip designed to help workers find clarity in their thinking and a renewed sense of energy and purpose. That's if it's all properly managed. If not, things really can get dangerous and even deadly. A book published in 2018 helped change perception of the drugs. It was written by Michael Pollan entitled, How to Change Your Mind, What the New Science of Psychedelics Teaches Us About Consciousness, Dying, Addiction, Depression, and Transcendence. It was this book that inspired one of our guests tonight to create an entire program based solely on these drugs. Jay Godfrey is the founder of Nushama, a medically supervised program of psychedelic treatments for depression, chronic pain, addiction, mood disorders, and more. A patient named Madeline was treated with ketamine at Nushama after a mastectomy for breast cancer. Madeline was in a very dark place, she says. She says she seriously considered even suicide. Ketamine gives you an opportunity to like see your ch past traumas and then like try to work through them. I believe it must have been in either the third or the fourth journey where th there was like a detachment um, from like the, the self and the physical body. There was me looking at that other version of myself. I was looking at that other self like with compassion. The scarring, which is the, something that like was affecting me a lot before, everything just dissipated in that moment. Okay, so my next guests have deep expertise in all of this. Amy Robbins is a clinical psychologist. Jay Godfrey is the founder of Nushama. And Rick Doblin is a drug activist and founder of the Multidisciplinary Association of Psychedelic Studies. Amy, Jay, and Rick, uh, thank you for being with us. Amy, I want to start with you. I'm going to be honest here. I don't know much about this. I haven't tried psychedelics, but I will say I have friends and even coworkers uh, who have and say it was literally life-changing and it is the new thing. Um, explain, Amy, how does it work? Well, I'm gonna actually refer to, to Dr. Doblin for that because I think he can probably better speak to exactly how it works. I, like you, am a clinical psychologist, I'm new to exploring these medicines and, and in terms of just how patients are coming to me asking about them. So I've been exploring my own journey in terms of what these medicines can do and how they can help people. But I will defer to you, Dr. Doblin. Yeah, Dr. Well, Doblin, tell us. I mean, for people at home who don't know, how do they work? Well, there's two basic kinds. There's the classic psychedelics like LSD, psilocybin, mescaline, uh, ayahuasca, and then there's also MDMA. MDMA works by reducing activity in the amygdala, the fear processing part of our brain, and increasing the supply of oxytocin, the hormone of love and connection and nursing mothers, and also increasing activity in our prefrontal cortex, so we think more logically, changing our brain in exactly the opposite ways that PTSD changes our brain. And MDMA builds the sense of love, connection, and ability to process difficult emotions. The classic psychedelics work more by taking the part of our brain that is associated with our sense of self, our individuality, and that is relaxed. And there's a more emergence of uh, more information, more connectivity, going beyond these ego states. And also in both MDMA and in the classic psychedelics, emotions that have been very difficult and have been suppressed because they're painful in one way or another, they come to the surface. And that's why these substances are so great for psychotherapy, but they've also been used for thousands of years for the spiritual experience, which is again, this sense of connectivity, this all one, this move beyond the ego. So what we've found now is that when you support them in a therapeutic context, you can get remarkable results. And that's where we're going through the FDA. We're right now in phase three studies of MDMA assisted therapy for PTSD. But Dr. Doblin, when, when you talk about it, it changes the brain. Um, I, I got to ask you, Jay, I mean, the first thought I have, is it 100% safe uh, and is it legal? Well, the only legal psychedelic at the moment 
is ketamine, which is what we use at Nushama. There's been long debate on whether these are legal, or sorry, whether they're safe, whether they're addictive. Uh, and the DEA currently has many psychedelic molecules, including MDMA, LSD, DMT, Ibogaine, and others as Schedule One drugs, meaning they are uh, addictive and they are dangerous. But that is patently false, as thousands of years in indigenous cultures have proven. And much of the research that's being done currently by MAPS and by other organizations are, are bearing fruit. These are not dangerous medicines if used appropriately, and they are non-addictive. In fact, they fight addiction if they're used properly. Yeah, and to be fair, I mean, we've heard scientists say other times that things are dangerous and addictive and then come to find out they're actually good for us. Uh, Amy, let me ask you, you said in the beginning that you've, you've tried this. Uh, what was your experience like and, and did it help? So I tried it from the perspective of a licensed clinical psychologist who's really seeing the movement in, in, into psychedelics as a treatment. And it was extremely powerful. I did it under the supervision of someone who was well-trained, which I think is, is, is very important because these drugs are very powerful. We don't necessarily know how we're going to re respond and react to them. And so I think that doing them under the guise of someone who can guide you through your journey is essential. It was not what I expected, but it did blow my mind. It was, it was no. very powerful. I felt like I was really able to access parts of myself that you just can't get to in talk therapy, in traditional talk therapy. I mean, was that scary though, Amy? Was it scary? I mean, some of that sounds it sounds like it would scare me a little bit. Well, because I knew that there were people there who knew what they were doing, who had, had taken people on journeys before, I felt very safe, very contained, very held. And I think that's why this is so important, is that we have people there who are experienced, who know what they're doing, who know how people respond in their journeys. Because if not, yes, it could be. I would anticipate it would be very scary. But for me personally, it felt like when I looked around, when I opened my eyes, I knew that everybody who was there, who was guiding me, was there for me. And that was extremely powerful to have, I, in, in my journey, there were six other people holding the space for me. And to look around and have the experience of people being there for you was incredible. And then the integration of that. So it wasn't just that I had this journey. It was also what I did to follow and what I did before, which was to explore, OK, what do I need to do to prepare for this? How do I prepare for this? Are there things I should be eating or not eating or thinking about or meditating or breathing? And then after the experience, how was I integrating what happened to me? So I worked with an integration coach to discuss what had happened and what was continuing to happen over the coming days, weeks, and months after my psychedelic trip. Yeah, it's certainly very, very interesting. Dr. Doblin, I want to ask you, we hear about these corporate retreats now. I mean, I can't imagine, it's hard for me to imagine my company taking all of us on a psychedelic corporate retreat, but I mean, tell us, is this, is this becoming more common? I think it is, and I think we have to look again at what these substances do. They bring things to the surface of the mind. We use that in therapy to make difficult emotions, but they can also bring new ideas, creativity. You know, we hear a lot about microdosing out in Silicon Valley and other places. That's for creativity. So these substances can be used for um, bonding, for um, coming up with new ideas. But again, even then, you cannot predict what's going to happen. So when you do this on a corporate retreat, you need still some therapeutic support just in case people start yeah, working you on those. You can't predict what's going to happen. I mean, that makes me think, gosh, like, I, I don't know if I want to be with my coworkers and not, and not know what's going to happen and have all of these uh, epiphanies. Jay, let me get you in real quick. Critics have said the drugs aren't safe, that at some of these retreats there's been robberies, rapes, even murders that have occurred. I mean, Jay, do you think it's really safe experimenting with this? I don't think people should experiment with anything without the proper medical supervision first. Secondly, like anything and any uh, drug, people need to be uh, properly screened, whether there's any contraindications. For example, most psychedelics cannot and should not be used with antidepressants. Um, uh, other conditions like hypertension or high blood pressure should be monitored during 
uh, during the experience or at least screened for that. Um, and it's really, really important to have a proper amount of preparation uh, with, a, with a trained therapist to help the journeyer or the patient or um, the voyager, whatever, the, whatever you want to call them, really prepare for the experience. And integration is super important. So there are many, many wonderful ways that are safe, that are done with licensed professionals who have been trained by many organizations, including uh, Rick Doblin's MAPS. And those are the retreats that you should go to. And those are the places that are safe. Um, I can't really speak yeah, we're to- we're just about out of time. The, I, I hear you. It, it does seem like you have to, if you're going to try this, you've got to do it in a controlled way with, with a reputable uh, professional. Uh, Amy, Jay, absolutely. and Rick, thank you so much. Certainly eye-opening and interesting. Thank you to all three of you for coming on tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.